And we're back, 1 to 5, all afternoon. You're listening to The Drew Marshall Show. And we're trying to cover the subject of evil. And uh, for many of you, that simply means your mother-in-law. Folks, I'm about to introduce you to a very good friend of mine. Um, Although we're sort of like brother and sister, we have our odd quarrel, and uh, we like to kind of pick on each other. But she's got a big brother that picks on her even more. Ladies and gentlemen, you can see this pretty gal right behind me, the one and only Candace Cameron. By the way, what is that last name? Burr, Burry, Burray, Burra? So all your Canadian friends know how to pronounce it. I don't, I don't understand what that is. What language is that? <laughs> Here's a little trivia question for you. Last time, uh, you've been on my radio show a bunch of times, so I like to do this. I like to just kind of see how sharp you really are. Uh, what do uh, Tom Hanks, Sally Field, John Goodman, and Jennifer Aniston all have in common? Me. <laughs> I don't know why I was surprised that you actually would get the answer. I worked with all you of them. You have worked with all those, including Jennifer <laughs> Aniston in Camp Cucamonga. You forgot to add Denzel Washington to oh. that list. Or did you? I didn't Excuse hear me. Because <laughs> I know Kirk has been cruel to you growing up, actually. I remember you sharing one time that he used to pin you down like a big brother and then kind of have that big gob of spit come out and terrify you and then suck it back up, right? Yes, totally. The loogie hanging halfway down and stuck it up right before it hit. But you know there were those times where it totally just hit me in the face. He had to torture his little sisters. That's what big brothers do. Which is the sister I met at the party at your place? Is that Melissa? Yes. She looks like me with brown hair and brown eyes. Speaking of, uh, of uh, out of control, how's Kirk? He's crazy. Crazy. <laughs> um, what, was it like a Regis impersonation? <laughs> what was that? I get goofy around you. Folks, you can go to uh, Candace Cameron Burray, CandaceCameronBurray.net. She's got a book there you can buy. There's a blog. There's all sorts of Candace booty to purchase. Not sure if that sounded right. Hey, welcome back. Uh, we are going to do something that I've always wanted to do on television, which is uh, hang out with some cool animals. I grew up with some pretty uh, crazy shows, as probably many of you did. Uh, Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. I'll stay here while Jim goes and wrestles the lion was my favorite line. And, of course, watching Johnny Carson uh, get pooped on uh, was always fun. What about pooping again? That's what I'm most concerned with. She poops with. once a week in her in her water dish. Okay. So I just flush the poop. The only thing going through my mind is poop right now. Uh, I think he's going to actually take a nice sit down right here and eat his Dude. grape. And let it sort of squish on your My head. My head is not a stinking table. <laughs> so a lot of people think these might make a good pet. And she has that big, long beak, which she scares <laughs> other animals it's got with. grape guts on my face, yes. So they have a skin flap from their hands to their feet. Oh. I'm going to show you it by A lot of older women have the same thing. Guy you used to work with, Mr. Steve Martin, just had a baby. Well, did he? His, his woman did, yeah. Oh, wow. Just had a baby. Wow. That's crazy. Isn't he like 90? He can do all things. Apex of your career. Would it be uh, uh, Travolta stuff, the the urban cowboy thing? You mean emotional apex? No, like as a, hey, I'm a rock star Hollywood actress. What was it? It was it. It's got to be urban cowboy. That's got to be the coolest thing. Meaning what people thing. know me? Yes. Oh no, that was so long ago. No. Who no, but, you know? Who cares no, what I, it was? Believe it or not, it's, it's Funny Farm and If Tomorrow Comes. The people you've worked with. I mean, you've, what an honor to be able to work with John Travolta, yeah. Steve Martin. Oh, yeah. uh, oh Joe else? Pesci, John Joe. Ritter, Jeff Goldblum. Work with John Ritter. Yeah, a couple I, times. Every person we I've spoken to. We were actually good friends. Yeah, Yeah, said that lovely yeah. guy. Just oh, yeah. a class act. Yeah. Right. Um, your husband's a hockey player. So uh, <laughs> uh, let's talk more about this Hollywood stuff, because that's actually more intriguing than... Did you Wait. just want to do just you and her? Do I need to stay on <laughs> no, this? I know. So you're going to take whatever you have and in the middle, and you're going to push. Ha! Huh. <clears throat> just like huh. that. <laughs> okay. Now, the key to self-defense is that you're not going to stick around while he recuperates. So you're going to maim... And then run. Right. Can we say that together? Maim and, and run. run. Everybody out there in TV land, <laughs> maim and run. Okay. okay. Excuse me, pretty lady. Oh. Well that was done. Way too hard. And run. Ow. Are you kidding me? You're going to grab his armor's under, underarm. Which is a little gross right now, i got to say. A little, <laughs> a little hot. Okay. 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 And then you're going to actually pull down and push up. I don't think she can do this. I got 20 bucks on this one. Mm -hmm. So I'm just coming at you like this. Yep. Okay. That was, that was gentle. That was gentle. Yes, yeah. that was Thank gentle. Thank you for that. Oh, okay. On. Maybe one more time, just so I know when I'm Oh, really? Oh, you're funny. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So if you're going to grab my shoulders yep. and you're instantly a threat, 
I'm okay. going to come around Just like this. Just slow down. Just do that a little slower, please. I'm sorry. I forgot I was dealing with a muffin. Okay. <laughs> Oh crap! What oh, was that? That was a good response. Way to get all Bruce Lee on me I there. I had to get my hands together. Okay. It sounds like you're having maybe a bit of a party over there at Louise's house uh, on on Martha's Vineyard. Is there someone else that maybe we could we could sort of chat with? Well, I have to tell you that um, I have invited some people that are very near and dear to me, and actually they came all the way from heaven just to be here. I want to share them with you if you don't mind. Okay. Woo! Right. They're so fabulous. So I'm going to go and let me see if I can get them to come up and say hello to you. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah, we'll just uh, chat. Thank you for that close-up. Uh, wow. So, uh, yeah, that, ladies and gentlemen, share here on CTS Weekender. Wow, what a privilege and an honor. And, of course, uh, we're waiting to speak. Oh, Privilege. Of course it was, but it's more of a privilege to be with me, Drew. Oh, yes, it is. Listen, uh, Miss Hepburn, I thought you were dead. Oh, hi. Welcome back to CTS Weekender. Got a little carried away with the book I've been reading here, The Essential Elements of Sex. It's hard for me because I, down deep inside, I'm still an eight-year-old boy. <laughs> okay? And so I get, you know, jokey and silly with this kind of stuff. But, okay. So, um... If couples uh, were better at X, it would help their marriages stay together longer. What's the X? I think the X is communication. The guys tend to bring up what most, and the ladies tend to bring up what most. The guys tend to want to have sex more often. Right. And the women are struggling with orgasm. So whenever I uh, I've talked about this on my radio show, including I think when we had you on mm -hmm. last time, um, you know, a lot of couples are, are wanting to know, how many times a week is normal? Do you know, is there a national average or yeah, something? Yeah, there, there absolutely is. In Canada, oh. it's 1.26 times a week, which works out to be about 66 times a really year. Really hoping you would, <laughs> that was a little higher. Really? Uh-huh. That's the average? Yeah, that's the average. That's 0.26. Can I just talk about that for a second? <laughs> Men, uh, it's easier for them to have an orgasm than women. Typically. For the most part, for is it most not? For the most part, yes. Okay. Yes. Is it because women are thinking, I've heard this, about grocery lists and stuff yes. that doesn't have anything to do with what's going on yes. right there? Women are brilliant multitaskers, and so oftentimes they're trying to figure out, you know, what color should I paint the ceiling and all these different sorts of things that are going through their brains. Right, right. Mm -hmm. It's really okay. hard. So do you help, like, what do you do in this situation where, the, where, where there's a fly flying around here? Do you see this yeah, fly? Yeah, I noticed that. A random fly <laughs> in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Ted DiBiase, the million dollar man. Great to chat with you again, buddy. Take care. Love you, man. All right, see you, Ted. Bye-bye. All right, folks, a uh, very, very short break, and we're back with more on CTS Weekender. Stay with us. I was thinking back to my daughter's prom, and we actually, it's so expensive, I got the limousine from my family funeral home business, wow. uh, which is kind of weird. But right. speaking of that, uh, my father is <laughs> up next, and we're going to talk about the funeral industry when we come back. When a body is cremated, uh, the casket and the body go into the crematorium and the so the bones don't burn right down do no, they? No they don't. No. This is the weird part that some people don't like. They have to be ground up. They do. Once the body is at the funeral home uh, then of course the body needs to be treated. This is what I remember having grown up in the you know I, I trained to almost do this yeah. so I decided against it for many reasons. Uh, the body needs to be treated so that it, basically bottom line it's gonna sound a little, little tacky but so that it doesn't stink out the joint during the, the visitation that's in the funeral. The, uh, that's the embalming procedure. Right. Uh, there's an incision made by the clavicle. The embalming fluid mixture is injected through the circulatory system, pushing out the blood down the table, drains into a holding tank. And, uh, and that's pretty much, I mean, there's some other things that really don't need to be discussed right now, but that's pretty much it as that's far as... That's basically it. Right. Yeah. But if there's a, an autopsy, that circulatory system is disrupted because the coroner has taken out the vital organs to, uh, to investigate or study. So it makes work, uh, more work for the funeral director because now it's a, a six-point injection. Hey, welcome back to CTS Weekender. Drew Marshall here with a couple of very good friends, Carl and Lenore Wirtz. You may have caught the first part of their story last week. Uh, I guess the bottom line is that uh, Lenore was uh, uh, closing at a clothing store that you were working in, and a few minutes before close, this random guy came in and attacked you. You know, you weren't just stabbed, you were stabbed 31 times. A unit of blood left in you. That's what the paramedics said? Mm -hmm. A unit of blood. You've said this before, uh, Lenore, but the thing that kept you going, what was going through your mind? Oh, to see Carl and the girls again. I know your family. 
you have a very lovely and unique family and you deflect that all the time. No, 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 we're just like, no, you're not like everyone else. The love story that you two have is sickening. I just want to say that on record. It is, but it's, it, it, and this is when I first saw it. When I was in the courtroom during victim impact uh, reading day. Mm -hmm. uh, Carl, when you read yours, mm -hmm. the entire courtroom fell apart emotionally. Mm -hmm. Everybody was sobbing. Would you say this event, because a lot of these events have impacts on relationships and you hear about a lot of divorces afterwards when yeah. something traumatic like this happens. Yeah. What's happened to you guys, Carl? Well, I mean, we've referred to this as a love story. There's a tragic outcome uh, to a story we all hoped would end it a very different way. The body of 32-year-old Tim Bosma of Ancaster was found earlier this week after a massive search. Sitting at home, watching the news every night. There's a lot of people that come away with this opinion. Mm -hmm. They say, what is with all the black guys killing black guys? Is it just, is it media bias? Or, it, or is there a real legitimate issue in this community? When people say, uh, you know, you'd be in the, in the coffee shop, you might be at the pub, and, and uh, you might, especially out in the country where I live, I'll hear people say, look, if those people are gonna move here, they need to dress like us, they need to talk like us, they need to try to fit in and leave all their religious stuff back where they came from, right? Why do they have to bring, be a Canadian. If you're gonna come to Canada, be a Canadian. Yeah.